Yes, I still remember those days. It was him and I. We, we were out there, out there in the land beyond the Jordan. He, he just got done being introduced by his father. Me, I had a job to do. I was to put him to the test. I was to open his eyes to see how this world really was and how it all worked. I was to find out what he was made of. Me, as a messenger, was to see where his heart truly was. In Hebrew, they call it piezo, which to you means testing or tempting. Just like Moses used it in the book of the law called Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is testing, piezo, you to find out whether you do love him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Pierzo, to me, was a passion. It was my job. God called on me to work on his son. Just like he asked me to work with Adam and Noah and David, all these men were challenges, and I was winning. I was running the perfect score. You see, Adam, Adam was my first opponent, so it was only a matter of time. Time until I could see and work on his weak side. So I patiently waited for that perfect opportunity. And so it came. It was just one-on-one -on -one when I saw the door go ajar. It was, it was almost too easy. You see, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. The door I saw was not just to Adam, but also to a woman named Eve. So that is where I started. Oh, did she fall for it? She tasted it, and it was good. It opened her eyes. It filled her with wisdom. Wisdom she felt that she had to share with her beloved Adam. Yes, it only took minutes. And this creature that God called man fell, fell just like a rock. Yes, I opened his eyes, opened them to see what truly was all around him. He then hid his head in shame and fear. My first contestant was easy, and I was just getting my career started. So I continued on. Now that man you all call Noah, he was more of a challenge. Yes, he, he took me years to, uh, to acquire God, he had Noah doing this some serious work for him. God saw how my work was then flourishing there and all over the earth. How I was opening everybody's eyes. How I manipulated greed into a lot of hearts and souls. How I made them hunger for wealth and attention. I was just doing my job. That job that he gave me. But God... God didn't see it like that. He didn't like the outcome. He wanted it all to end, so he planned to wash this place he called Earth clean. And Noah, he was part of the plan. So he had Noah build the ark. I fought it. I fought it all the way. I sent people there left and right to pick on and harass him. Surely after a while, he would give up and join the crowd. But no. No, he was a stubborn man. Then one day it did happen. The sky turned black and the rain began to fall till God the Father washed away all my fun. All that I had left to work on was Noah and his family. I was frustrated. I was upset. What did he leave me to work with? Noah, his wife, their daughters, and their, their stepsons? That is not much. But in my eyes, the fight was not yet over. No, again one day that door was left ajar. I saw it. Noah was a farmer, and he planted a simple plant called grapes. And he took those grapes, and he fermented them. What an opportunity. It was then almost too easy, and again I won the battle through the stomach. He got drunk. And his sons, they had to cover him. And, and Noah, oh, oh, did he get mad. So mad. And again, I held my arms up as the champ always does. Because that is what I was. My movement called sin was not washed away and gone forever. 
with that thing they all called a flood. I was Rocky Balboa, and I continued on. Now that man you all called David, he was a very feisty opponent. He was a man with a good heart. I worked on him from little on up. I teased him with his older brothers, and what did he do? He showed them up. He showed them up that day that when they ran from that man I sent, that man everyone called Goliath. Not David, though, no. He didn't, he didn't run. He didn't let that simple giant scare him away. No, he faced him, and he gave him a headache that never left. So I had to find a better way, and I had to go back to my drawing board. I next tried to send a man named Saul after him. He was the king, and he felt threatened by David. Actually, he tried to kill him. But no, that plot of mine didn't work either. So finally, one day, I caught him off guard. It was not food or drink that I used. Oh, no. It was beauty. You see, he saw her up on that rooftop. His guard instantly fell down. And after that day, he was no longer even a fight. It was no longer even a challenge. He was Play-Doh in my hands. He was mine. It all led from one mistake to the next as I molded him. First it was adultery. Then I had him lie. Then it led it to a murder. He became a simple puppet on the end of my strings. And so again I won. Even an opponent as mighty as this man named David fell from the loss and became a puppet. He became a tool at my expense. Now this all led up to my championship showdown, to a bout that started out in the wilderness, to a fight that had me lined up with God's only begotten son. I was to tempt him with everything I had, and so I did. I threw it all at him. Wild animals, temptations of food, of power and prestige, but nothing seemed to work. It was the boxing match of all boxing matches. Every day I came out of my corner throwing my left and my right at him, but he blocked every one. I beat Adam. I beat Noah. I beat David. But nothing was working on him. After 40 days, it was no use. The bout was called a draw. The test was over, but only for the time being. Was I satisfied? No. No, I was not. I was not going to let it end this way. It was not over. So for the next three years, him and I would have it out. He drove my demons out of the people that came to him, and I tempted his disciples every chance I had. He brought the dead back to life, pulling them from my grasp. I completely won over one of his disciples. And that all led up to our final set of bouts. It actually all started one night out there in a simple garden called Gethsemane, which that night became a boxing ring, a wilderness in a city called Jerusalem. Our gloves were put back on and the bell was rung for the final round. Even then, his disciples he called forth could not stay awake. Even then, his twelfth disciple named Judas betrayed him with a kiss. And even then, if he wanted to, I would have let him easily drop his gloves and join me. But no, no, he just stood there again and again and again, blocking all my swings. He let it all unwind, but it was not yet over. It led into the following day. Then I hung on a cross beside him, and as I hung there, I simply yelled over, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But he did not even so much as flinch. I then left that thief and went into the soldier who came up to him. So I, I simply had him offer Jesus wine vinegar and say, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. But again, he would not even budge. I couldn't understand it. He had all the power at any such moment to just step off those pieces of wood and rule the world and rule it with me. But he wouldn't. I still don't understand how he held out. Yes, I then stood there at his feet. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at that ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, 
which meant, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The guy beside me then offered him more wine vinegar. As I simply stood there before him, whispering into his ear, take some, take some, just drink a little bit and it will all be over. But all I heard then was someone say, no, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes and to take him down. I knew he was at his weakest. I saw him hanging there for those long hours. I stood there at his feet now silently crying out, come on, come on, just, just, just call your angels and they will catch you before you even touch the ground. I don't know how he did it, but he did. He fought my final temptation as I threw all I had at him. When suddenly I felt the ground begin to shake with a loud voice, Jesus breathed his last. The fight was over, and he won. That centurion who stood there beside me claimed him the victor. He said, surely this man was the Son of God. Yes, I remember those days still. I remember all the temptations that I used upon him. All the piezo, the, the testing, everything and anything I could throw at him, but he won. He won that battle. But guess what? The war is not yet over. There are battles yet to be fought, temptations I have yet to throw, souls I have yet to win, lives yet to be purchased. The days are numbered. The sand in the hourglass is running low. Time is running out. The lives I now try to win, they are not his. They are yours. And my numbers are growing more and more every hour. On the cross, Jesus endured the greatest temptations of them all, the temptation to save his own life. Instead, he saved yours. His endurance against my temptation became your own. You are the children, which means you are never alone in this world. He went into that wilderness to fight for you, and by his own obedience gave to you the power to endure it as well. Me, the tempter, I will continue throwing at you all kinds of trials and invitations. Christ, your Savior, he will help you fight them all. Help you because of a, one simple word, a word you call love. I call it agape. That love he has for you is indescribable. My advice to you is to save and cherish it always. I stood there, and I tempted him until I was blue in the face and could no more. He paid that final price for your soul's forgiveness, but only if you ask for it. He fought that fight for you against me, and all you have to do is let him into your life. Now I await that day. That day I will see the door ajar on you, like I saw one on Adam and Noah and David. Christ's door, his is always open. I see that now. He holds it open for anyone to accept, anyone to reach out for him, for his mercy, for his grace, for his love, for his forgiveness. His door is the invitation open to any who wish to step through it, into his loving arms and his life-giving blood, his blood which is full of grace and mercy. Yes, I will continue on. I will search for those who refuse to hear his calling, his loving gift. I do, however, fear that day, that day when he returns, that day the trumpet will sound and the war will be over and my days here will be no more. Then all who know him will be called home and there will be peace at last, a peace I can do nothing about. A peace that will be his gift to you for all of eternity. Amen.